My next guest is a women's bantamweight and featherweight uh, who's fought for Invicta and in the UFC as well as Ryzen. Of course, I'm talking about Cindy Danois joining me here on the program. Cindy, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining me. Now, where, where are you right now? Are you in the United States or are you back home? No, I'm back home. I'm like right in front of my gym. Oh, great. Okay, that's awesome. So what time is it over there? Uh, it's uh, 8 p.m. Okay, about. great. Well, thank you for joining me so late. I appreciate it. And uh, let, let's talk about the Ultimate Fighter tryouts, uh, Season 28. We know that you went there, you tried out. Um, first, just take me through the process of trying out and, and what happened. Why were you not on the show? Uh, so, um, actually, I asked before if, if it would make sense to come over because... Um, I, I was before I was cut by the UFC, so I was like, yeah, this makes sense. Are they really serious about building a featherweight division? And they told me yes, so I decided to fly out. So uh, I bought tickets, flew out, uh, and uh, started the whole process. And um, they had like uh, grapplings and uh, like uh, some striking on the mids and everything, and everything went fine. So I got through the first round. Uh, then they had interviews and medicals and all this stuff. Uh, and I got to, to those rounds too. So they gave me a camera to fly back home and film my life and, you know, make uh, images of everything because uh, I have a full life. Uh, and uh, I didn't hear anything for a long time, but they told us it was normal because we have to had to do background check and everything. So they promised that it would be a featherweight division they would try to build. And like I'm a ranked featherweight, so I was like, really hoping I would uh, be able to have a spot in uh, in, in that uh, show uh, but at the end they decided to pick like all very green uh, featherweight or like bantamweights uh, so yeah I was very disappointed uh, to see that they're not taking the division seriously because even if they didn't pick me like they had other very good featherweights over there too uh, who made perfectly sense so uh, yeah that broke my heart yeah, I agree with you. It was very surprising when I saw the list of fighters because a lot of them are bantamweights. And, and the idea, I would think, with the show was to, to find someone to fight Chris Cyborg or at least, uh, you know, be in the division. How did you find out you weren't on the show? Was it just when they released the roster or did they tell you ahead of time? No, they told me like four days before that I was like an, uh, like an extra. Like if oh, somebody reserve. would get okay. hurt. Yeah, somebody would get hurt, I would be able to fall in. But then I talked to some of the other girls, like the other featherweights, the real featherweights, and they all got the same message. So, yeah, if there are like nine extras, that's like not really fair because we were like preparing, cutting weight, you know, to be able to fight on the show. There were very good featherweights like Zara Fair and Pam Sorensen. Like those girls are legit in the featherweight division um, and none of us were picked. So, uh, yeah, we all got the same like message that we are... Uh, spare, let's well, say. I, and and I, I saw something you tweeted as well. It, it looked like at the beginning anyways that they, it, that you were under the assumption, I know some of the fighters were, that they weren't even going to have featherweights on the show. Um, when did you actually find out that, that they were going to have women and that they were just a bunch of bantamweights? Um, well, I, I know some of the girls and they started telling me like, oh, I mean, I'm like, yeah, that's a bantamweight. Like, and then I heard from other girls that they were like going in the house. Like, you know, we talk, of course. And I was like, well, the, the featherweight they picked had like two fights and even one girl didn't have any pro fight. Like, come on. The zero zero is like, how can she be able to fight Chris? And then, of course, like, you know, the, some bantamweights they took are really good bantamweights. Pani Kianzat is an awesome girl. I love that girl. Very deserving. But still, she's a bantamweight. She should have been signed already, you know. Uh, and uh, some girls have like losses against girls. I have wins over and I'm like, yeah. We we uh, it's no, no it's, just, it's it's very bizarre to be honest. And then and then also, I mean, you you fought in the UFC. They only gave you the one fight. Um, I saw you also posted something on social media about how you think uh, Sean Shelby has something against you. Um, yeah. What what have you like? What has the dialogue been like with the UFC? Because uh, again, you only had the one fight, and and you have a win over Megan Anderson. Like that that I would think would earn you a, another chance in the UFC. Yeah, like they gave me one fight at bantamweight against another grappler, and then. They like I broke my foot in that fight, so I didn't uh, didn't do what I had to do, of course. But still, I won like a close decision loss against a very good girl. Um, and like that time, Chris Cyborg was like in suspension, so they cut me, and I was like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense because I I'm actually no bantam weight. Like it's a very hard cut for me. But then they opened the division again at 145, and I was like, you know, I deserve my shot there. 
so they didn't speak to me at all and Sean isn't really communicating with me nor with Misha about like giving me another chance so yeah there is no communication like for now the moment now they're saying they're gonna build a featherweight division but as far as I know no other real featherweight is signed to be able to compete against Chris I mentioned Megan Anderson. Uh, were you surprised to see her uh, lose the way she did against uh, Holly Holm, or did you expect that heading into the fight? Um, no. I thought Holly would strike more with her, but I know uh, Megan's wrestling defense isn't that great because that's the way I beat her. So actually, I already showed uh, Holly what her weaknesses are. Um, of course, Megan is a great striker, but like I think on the ground, she has a lot of uh, place to improve. So... Uh, I, I wasn't surprised she lost to Holly, but I thought it would be a stand-up fight. I didn't know uh, Holly would actually uh, dare to tra- take her to the ground. Like, that's, uh, yeah, it's good of her. Okay, fair enough. Um, you, you've been undefeated since you've been in the UFC, but uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you, I know your last two opponents have had losing records. Is, is that just, you, you've just tr- has it been difficult getting opponents? Is that sort of the reason for, for the level of uh, caliber of opponents you've been fighting? Um, so I fought in Cage Warriors that time, like Kerry, which wasn't in, a, in a, like, any losing record. She was like doing great. So that was a good fight for me. Then I fought like in three weeks notice, King Rina. Who's 7-0, from, uh, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah coming from a very low weight to like a 155 weight, like three weeks later. And then I normally, I hadn't planned to fight for like till March. Well, it was very hard to find an opponent because it was on a small Belgium card and like the card doesn't have the money to like fly big names in. So we just put our, my name out there, like who wants to fight me? And like only a few girls like uh, wanted to fight me. And like that girl was like the one with the best record. So like had the most fights. So that was the only one that like made a little bit sense. Um, and she had like a decision lost against like a girl, very, Veronica Macedo, who is in the UFC. Like, no, a draw. It was even a draw. So she like, fought really good girls. So the losing record is against really good girls. So that's, you know. And the fight before that, uh, I wasn't planning to fight, but uh, there is this girl in Holland, like a Muay Thai champion, and she, her opponent, like dropped out four days before a fight, and she, she like actually sold out the whole room to fight so she was like I need an opponent so she uh, asked me like do you know somebody and I was like you know what if you really need somebody like I'm almost on weight like I can come over like, doesn't matter and she was like yeah hell just come over like I need a fight like she has balls and I have balls and I just like went there without like a real training camp and fought and that's it yeah, and I'm glad you cleared that up because I saw some chatter on social media saying that you're fighting yeah. cans, but really, it's one of those things where you just need to stay active and you need to get fights. That, that's sort of what you're saying here is that you just you needed to stay active. Yeah, I needed to stay active, and it was like a three days or four days notice fight, and th- this girl had a decent training camp, and she has like 90 kickboxing fights with like uh, three losses and, and 87 wins or something, so she's like a world champion kickboxing, so it's not a can. Like, the people were saying that as a can, like, please strike with her. Go ahead. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I hear you on that. Um, is there any, has there been any dialogue with Bellator? You know, Julia Budd is their champion, and she's had a, it seems like Bellator is having a tough time finding her opponents. Is that an option at all uh, now that you're, you're a free agent at the moment? Yeah, um, I would love to fight for Bellator. Like, I think uh, Scott Cocker is, like, taking the division serious. I'm very happy to see that. Um, of course, I would love to fight Julia, but Julia has her eye on Sinet Kavana. She wants to fight Sinet first. Um, but uh, I know this uh, girl from um, Israel called me out, Olga Rubin. So I responded like, hey, I'm here. I want to fight you, of course, if you want to fight me. And she was like, she really wants that fight too because she's undefeated. So that makes totally sense. Like, I think I'm a good fight for her because if she can win, she builds her name. And for me, it's like an undefeated girl is always good to fight because then it makes it competitive. Um, so, yeah, I didn't hear, like, I had nothing on paper yet, but, like, I hope Belter will pick me up. Like, let's pray for that. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, you know, I know this is down the line, but how, how do you feel like you would match up against Julia if you, if you ever fought her? Oh, I, I would train very hard for that fight. I think she's an amazing fighter. It's a good, uh, she's a good striker and she's a decent wrestler too. But uh, yeah, I also have my things. So I think it would be a, like a classic uh, striker versus grappling, grappler match. So it would be, a, it would be a great fight. And I think I would bring more to the table than, table than all the other girls she faced in Bellator at the moment. So uh, it would be a good test for her too, because she, yeah, she fought girls who was like, don't have my experience. 
So, uh, yeah, it would be good. And, and I know uh, going to Bellator, going back to the UFC would, would be ideal, but is there any thought of going back and fighting for Ryzen? Uh, you know, it seemed like you had a good performance there and Ryzen's got, you know, that international exposure. Is that something you'd ever be open to? You know what? I loved to fight for Ryzen. Like, it was amazing. The Japanese fans are amazing. Uh, the moment that I'm not fighting there now is, I think, because they want to build their own girl again. Like, uh, nobody expected me to win from Rina. I know that. Uh, so, um, I know they're building her, but maybe, you know, in the future, I don't know, uh, if she wants a rematch or they have another big girl who wants to fight me. You know, I'm here. Like, I, 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 I take any fight, you know, like, I'm not somebody who ducks somebody. I always took hard opponents. Like, they can say I fought Kent, but I fought Daria Brigmoga. Uh, who had like no losses till she came against me. I had Marlu Schoonen, I had Yorina Bars who won from Cyborg in, in Muay Thai. So I, that's not true. Just haters gonna hate. What about downtime? Do you, do you get to watch any TV at all or uh, anything like that to, to kind of take your mind off training? Uh, oh yeah, sometimes I do. Like I love to watch old Disney movies with my kids or I like to watch Once Upon a Time. Like... Uh, it's a, it's a series, I, series, I don't know how I say that in English, like they have a seasons in it, like I love it. Okay, that. yeah. My, I think my wife watches that show. It's, uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. It's a good show. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Okay, well, uh, Cindy, I want to thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Just to remind people where they can find you on social media and if you have any sponsors you want to thank, the floor is yours. Uh, well, uh, you can find me on Twitter just by typing my name and on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, and I want to thank my management, A8 Management uh, and uh, Tygon Sports uh, for the support uh, they always give me. Uh, and I want to thank Club MMA for always being in my corner. Uh, yeah, always.